Hello there. There's an old saying that goes, music is food for the soul. Even Beethoven himself once said, music is the mediation between the spiritual and the sensual life. We've got lots to talk about. Join me in today's episode with Miss B as I talk about love and music and how the two intertwine with some very special guests from Philippine and international music industry. Welcome to One TV, where you can watch Viva Channel on your smartphone, PBO Movies on your tablet, Solar News, and all the latest sports on Action TV with your laptop, and of course, your favorite shows and teleseries on Kapata TV 5, as well as original shows on Channel 1. Watch Ann Curtis, Derek Ramsey, Sarah Ronimo, and all the biggest stars. With the largest selection of Filipino shows, teleseries, and movies, what better way to bring the family together than with One TV? Call us or sign up today at OneTV.ca. down to Tugawi Cove Resort because this place rocks. I'm so proud to feature on the show 1970s and 1980s music icon, Miss Teresa Carpio, who is also dubbed as Asia's Queen of Songs, and her equally talented daughter, film and stage actress, TV Carpio. Growing up in Hong Kong at a time where um, there was the British rule, um, growing up with, wow, uh, everywhere we go is just Filipino musicians. 98% of the musicians there were Filipinos, mm. from jazz to any, any kind of music they could play. And so I was very fortunate, very blessed that I grew up in that environment, and I never knew anything else. I feel so much for my Filipino uh, heritage mm -hmm. in Hong Kong. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. without the Filipinos, the, our music business, even with the Chinese music, it wouldn't be as good as it is as, as it was in the 80s and 90s. It was all the music mm -hmm. was by the Filipinos. Really? Even though the credits are, are given to uh, famous Chinese composers, because mm -hmm. the Filipinos say, yeah, okay, you, you, you go take the names, okay, we just get paid, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They, don't, they don't mind that, you know, we, because they, everyone worked really well together. There wasn't this thing, oh, I got to have this name, or I can't share this with you. It was all given out with Community. love. Yeah. The Filipinos just gave it all out. Mm -hmm. When, when my album first came out when I was 17, I was the cover queen. I mean, they, they gave me songs to sing, so I sang. I just want to do an album for my mom because mm -hmm. I was asked by EMI. And this uh, English guy, this tall six foot four English guy came. He's a, is, uh, the, the head of EMI in Hong Kong. He came and, and everybody was against his wishes. He thought he was crazy to find a Filipino Chinese singer mm -hmm. to do English songs on, you know, no, nobody's mm -hmm. ever did it. The, the history of Hong Kong, I sold more than the original singers. In, in Hong Kong. And then uh, the album sold 20,000 in Hong Kong, mm. but over 100,000 was sold pirated mm. in Thailand, Indonesia, mm -hmm. Singapore, Philippines. That's why so many people in Asia knew me, it was because of piracy. Mm. <laughs> You know, for me, on being on stage is like, wow, I'm so blessed. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I hope that I can do more. And that's why uh, teaching singing is such a, an honor for me to teach because I I really get so much from my students. Mm -hmm. They've given me that inspiration. Every every one of them, good or bad, they've given me their passion. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm very proud to say that up until today, 
whenever I go on stage, I feel, wow, I'm so amazed, you know, that I can do so much. It's because I've been teaching and sharing. This is a this is something that um, in in Hong Kong nowadays people are so afraid of sharing, so afraid of being, you know, I guess with the copying stuff, you know, and I go like. I've gone through that too, you know. I said, mm-hmm. why should I teach? People says, oh, we got to teach this. I said, no. Why should I share? Yeah. But I, when I did teach, I found that it's really not just one-sided. It's really all around so amazing that everybody benefits and everybody gets better. And that's, that's what I think in Hong Kong now, the community, uh, there's a lot of... Uh, you know, when, when you when you look into eyes of a performer or an artist or an up and coming singer or uh, someone who wants to be in the b- music business, they've lost that spirit of just the love and passion for music. Right mm-hmm. now, it's like I gotta look out for for my space here on the stage. Mm-hmm. Or I gotta look out for my name to be out there all the time. And yeah, yeah. and they're all worried about things that are not really uh, uh, that important to our art. Mm-hmm. They they want something that can uh, give you that emotional sense that you're really singing from your heart and to them. Let me tell you, now can I say? Because the, the first thing was, I was like, Mom, I was so excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm going to work with this amazing director. They're going to pay me to sing Beatles songs and like fly back to New York for like eight months. Like, yeah. isn't it awesome? I was like, she's like, what, 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 what? You got a job? I was like, yeah, yeah, I got a job. She's like, finally. (laughs) That was her reaction. It took her a while. It wasn't until I did the movie. It wasn't until I did the movie and it came to Hong Kong and she watched it. She was like, so proud. She's like, did you know my daughter? She's in, she sings this song. It's a cry. Everywhere we go and I'm like, mom, come on. Why couldn't you give me this reaction like when I got the movie? (laughs) No, you don't even remember the detail that when you called me oh, I remember. about the audition. You said, oh, honey, you're going to get it. Yes. You, said. you see, I, I've never ever said that before. Mm-hmm. Because I knew deep down that she really wanted it, mm-hmm. right? But because of, you know, when you grow up in the environment she's in with a mom or, or a parent that's a celebrity and very successful, it, it applies to every family that you see have successful parents. The children are always like... Yeah, you can do it, but I can't. You know, they mm-hmm. always have this thing. Very few would go and say, "I'm going to be better than you. Mm-hmm. And I don't need your help." Right? Mm-hmm. Even though she didn't ask me for help, but there's this this thing that I hear all the time. How come you're not helping me? You're always helping I your didn't students. Say that. Oh well, anyway, students. Yeah. Going back to the audition, <laughs> she called me, "Mom, uh, you know, I'm doing this audition. I can't tell you anymore." I said, "You're going to get it, and you're going to be paid this much." She says, "You're crazy, mom." Mm-hmm. And she did get paid that much. Really? Nice. All right, mom. Yeah. That's why I don't like her to tell me anything because sometimes everything she says says comes true, yeah. even if it's bad. I'm like, mom, don't say any more. Don't That's curse so it. Funny. Don't curse it. Don't just. I'm not let cursing me find it. Find my way. Because I you said, know, don't go out so late at night. It's too. It, mom. And then she fell down and hit her tooth and fell off. I was eleven. <laughs> I was 11. I have instant karma. Like, my parents never really have to punish me. Like, God punishes me instantly. (laughs) My mother used to tell me, I'm so lucky that I have instant karma. (laughs) Yeah. I snuck out the one time my mom said I couldn't go, and what do I do? I, I think I'm showing off, you know. You know, to be fair, to preface the story, I was in Springfield, Missouri, very <laughs> racist place at the time. I was, the, like, the only Asian person. So I wanted to be cool and be like, you know, I can rollerblade, ha-ha, you know, and I did, and I was, like, think, feeling all cool, and then what happens? I, I, I go on the, on the front wheel, fall flat on my face, and on the floor, I see half of my tooth there. Oh. And then the dreaded having to call your parents first that, hey, I'm not at <laughs> yeah. home, I'm at a skating rink, and uh, I broke half my front tooth. I gotta go to the dentist. So all the way to the dentist, and I hate the dentist with a passion. They, they all know it. My mom's just standing there. I could feel. I told you so. I told. I don't need to say it. I told you so. I told you so. You don't listen to me. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you something. I think you understand. When I say that something, I want to hold your hand. There's 
so many talented people, dime a dozen out there, but when they're proud and they're not hardworking and they blame the world, that's the worst. I, because I grew up in Hong Kong in an Asian culture, I think especially I, I, I was always taught to be humble. But when in an, in a Western environment, I find that doesn't always get you anywhere. In fact, I, I feel I feel like I've had to gain more like to say I can do this in order to just be heard because I'm so used to well I'll just sit and. Hopefully, someone will notice. So that's mm -hmm. why it's taken so long for me to say, "Okay, well, I can do it." <laughs> where, yeah, yeah. where you know, where I, I found as before, like I just didn't have the confidence to say that. I mean, really, Spider Man is the first time I felt like I had the confidence, even after yeah. Cross Universe. I didn't even realize. Nobody thought. I didn't really ever felt like I could sing. It wasn't only really until like I think it, someone told me like, "Oh, three million people watched you on YouTube singing that one song." I was like, "Really?" <laughs> Or in Spider-Man, like, um, I tell They'll you... be watching Elle a lot. It was really, really. cute. You spent a fortune. I'll tell you, the first time she came, that was really cute. The first time, I didn't know she was coming to see the show. Mm. And it was my birthday that uh. year. And so as I'm taking my bow, I see this person running down the aisle of, of the theater, <laughs> running. And I'm, like, seeing my mom. She goes, that's my baby! She starts standing. Oh. She's like, that's my baby! She's like, it's her birthday! It's my baby! And she's like crying. I'm crying. All the girls in the chorus are crying. And she starts to come up on the stage. I'm like, no, mom, you can't come up on the stage. I'll see you backstage, okay? <laughs> It was really cute. All the girls afterwards, the chorus girls were telling me, they're your mom. She's like, I was crying. It was so sweet. <laughs> yeah, so she's a very proud mom. <laughs> what can you uh, like, give an advice to avoid like three things that they should not do? They should never give up on their dreams. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, if, like say, in in, the, in Vancouver, it's, it, and, and Canada, especially if you live in Canada, it's a huge country. Mm -hmm. They should travel all around and keep performing and doing their art. Right. You know, I never stop, you yeah, know, no matter even if you have a day job, you find time to to hone your skills, keep doing stuff, you know. It's like I'm, I'm so happy to meet Andre and, and Boom because mm -hmm. even though they might have other things that they want to do or, you know, they'll keep on doing something about the entertainment and keep, like for you, keep on spreading the word. Because mm -hmm. music and arts, it's the core of our being. Yes. We cannot not do this.